Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, I'll be doing question 6 of November 2022 question paper, Physical Sciences Paper 1. And this is the Doppler effect. So, the frequent, okay, so I'm going to read the statement and then proceed to answer the question that follows. Um, Elena investigate the relationship between the observed frequency and the frequency of sound emitted by stationary source. Elena moves towards the source at a constant velocity and record the observed frequency for a given source of frequency. This process is repeated at different frequencies of the source, with the learner moving at the same constant velocity each time. The graph below shows how the observed frequency changes as the frequency of the sound waves emitted by the source changes. Okay, so you have your, your graph here. So this is the frequency of the source and then this is the observed frequency. So uh, you can see that as they were increasing the frequency of the source, the observed frequency was going up, which is the frequency of the listener. So let's go 6.1. So 6.1, name. The phenomenon illustrated by this graph. So this uh, phenomenon is the Doppler effect, you know, which is the observed um, change in the frequency of a sound due to the velocity difference between the source of sound and the uh, listener or the observer. So this is the Doppler effect. So this thing is illustrating the Doppler effect. 6.2. So 6.2. Name one application in the medical field of the phenomenon in 6.1. So they want us to name the application uh, of uh, Doppler effect in, in medical uh, in medical field. So Doppler effect is used to measure uh, the blood flow. Or Doppler flow meter. So the Doppler effect can be used to measure the blood, the blood flow. So 6.3. What are they saying? Write down the type of proportionality that exists between the frequency of a listener, which is this, and the frequency of the source as illustrated by the graph. So they want us to write the the relationship between this, the type of proportionality between the source of the frequency of the source and the frequency of the listener. So you can see that as you're increasing the, the, the frequency of the source, even the, the observed frequency increases as well. So, and they're increasing at the same rate. So these two are directly proportional. They are directly. So we can say frequency of the source is directly proportional to the frequency of the listener. So Fs is directly proportional to frequency of the listener. That's the kind of proportionality that we have there. So, they are saying the gradient of the graph obtained is found to be 1.06. So, the slope here of this line is found to be uh, m is equal to 1.06. If the speed of sound in air is 240 meters per second, calculate the velocity at which the learner approaches the source. So you are given that the gradient is that, and you are told that the speed of sound in A is 340 meters per second, right? So they are saying, calculate. Okay, so the gradient, the gradient of the obtained graph, which is that, is, is found to be, is found to be uh, 1.06. Right? If the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second, 
calculate the magnitude of the velocity which the learner approaches the source. So we have the gradient there. How do you find the gradient? To find the gradient, you say m equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for some for some f here. Uh, fs and some fs here so you have some fl here and you have fs here somewhere then in this point here so let's say you have two points point number one let's say this point is a here this point here is b so the point a have coordinates fs and fl Point V have coordinates 0 and 0. So your gradient M, which is 1.06, is obtained by what? By Y2, which is, you can say your FL minus 0, all over FS minus 0. So you have your FL over FS equal to 1.06. So, you know that the frequency of a listener equal to V plus or minus velocity of source or V plus or minus velocity of a listener times the frequency of a source. I think that is our formula for Doppler effect. Let me just confirm. Oh, sorry. So, it's velocity of a source, velocity of a listener. So now, uh, our, uh, sorry, yeah, so now the learner was approaching, was approaching the source of, of sound, approaching the source, right? So the observed frequency would be higher, higher frequency, which means now, we need to have a bigger numerator and a lower denominator. So our frequency of a listener will equal to V plus velocity of a listener over V minus velocity of source times the frequency of a source. Then carry on, come inside, clean this. Say okay, we don't have the frequency of a listener, we don't have the frequency of a source, but we do have the ratio of the frequency of a listener and the frequency of a source. Divide by frequency of a source both sides. So you have FL is equal to V plus minus or plus velocity of a listener over V minus velocity of a source, frequency of a source. So you divide by frequency of a source, divide by frequency of a source. This and that goes away. So here you have frequency of a listener is equal to V plus velocity of a listener over V minus velocity of a source. And you know what this is. This is 1.06 is equal to V, which is 340, minus velocity of a listener, which is what we're trying to establish. All divided by uh, 340 minus velocity of a source which was stationary. So we just solve this. So this times that, so we have velocity 340 minus VL is equal to 340 um, times 1.06, right? Let me transpose the 340. So we have 340 uh, times 1.06 minus 340 is equal to negative uh, is equal to oh, sorry, plus plus is equal to velocity of a listener. Therefore, the velocity of a listener is equal to this answer that you get here. 
which is about 6 percent of 340 so it should be 340 and 1.06 so you have this is 20.4 meters per second so the listener was approaching our source at this velocity here this was our constant velocity the entire time but for different frequencies so yeah, hope this is clear. Oh, it turns out we have one more question. Sorry. 6.5. They're saying now the investigation is now repeated with a learner moving at a higher velocity towards the source. Copy the graph above in your answer book and label it A. On the same set of axes, sketch the other graph that will be obtained when the learner is moving at a higher velocity label this graph b so now at this graph here so when the when this graph was plotted they were moving at this speed so now if you're moving at a higher speed which means more wavelengths will be reaching the learner per second so the frequency will be higher than that one so it will be something along the lines of something like this it will be more steeper because there will be more wavelengths reaching the person per second so if you if you think this is your graph A, so you'll have graph B like that. Because even if the frequencies are still the same, but now they'll be even if the frequency of the source is still the source is still the same. Source, the same set, the same values. But now the fact that the learner will be approaching it higher, the intuition is now more wavelengths will be reaching the person per second, which is which will result in higher frequency. So more sound waves, yeah. So it should be something like that. Now we are really finished.